Let's go Broncos! God bless Bo Nix! Hell yeah, Tony Scheffler! The Denver Broncos have been in dire need of their quarterback of the future, and I believe that we just took him at the 12th overall pick in this year's NFL draft, and Bo Nix is the guy that is going to lead us into the promised land. I've probably made video after video talking about how much I like Bo Nix to be the next quarterback for the Denver Broncos, how much I think Bo Nix fits with what Sean Payton wants to do here in Denver. And it finally freaking happened. And you can actually check out my reaction to the draft when I was live streaming on the first night of the draft. It'll be linked in this video somewhere. So if you haven't watched that one, go check it out and then come back to this video. But anyways, friends, my name is Derek, AKA Strez. Everyone favorite Kansas City based Broncos fan and I am here today to tell you why you should be excited about the acquisition of Bosif Nix quarterback from Oregon and if you haven't done so already click that subscribe button it takes 10 seconds and it's completely free so go ahead please I'm begging you. I'm kidding. It's okay if you don't want to subscribe. I have been pretty big on Bo Nix ever since watching him this last season and trying to figure out what the Broncos are going to do. And once the Broncos lost out on the Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels sweepstakes by winning too many games, I started to think to myself, which quarterback coming out this year would be the perfect quarterback to fit with Sean Payton in this system in Denver, Colorado? And it was Bo Nix. It was always Bo Nix. It was never Drake May. It was never J.J. McCarthy. And I know that everyone and their mom has been talking about how much of a reach it was for the Broncos to take Bo Nix at 12. But is it really a reach when Bo Nix is QB3 on Sean Payton's draft board? I mean, the only quarterbacks that Sean Payton had on this draft board ahead of Bo Nix was Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, the consensus number one and number two overall pick. So obviously, Sean Payton felt a specific way about Bo Nix. In fact, recent reports have come out saying that Sean Payton felt as strongly about Bo Nix as he did about Patrick Mahomes way back in the 2017 NFL Draft. And no, whenever Sean Payton says that he felt as strongly about Bo Nix as he did about Pat Mahomes, he is not saying that Bo Nix is as good as Pat Mahomes. I don't know where that made up comprehension is coming from, but that is absolutely not what that quote means. When Sean Payton says that he feels as highly about Bo Nix as he did about Pat Mahomes back in 2017, he simply means that he sees something in Bo Nix and he thinks that there is a good chance that Bo Nix might take off. <laughs> Can I get a bless you in the comments? Thanks. But really all that says about the way Sean Payton views Bo Nix is that Sean Payton thinks that Bo Nix has what it takes to be a genuine starter in this league. And what more could you want from your head coach than to like the quarterback that he's drafting? We all saw Sean Payton working with Russell Wilson in Denver last year. It did not work. As much as they tried to make it work, as much as I tried to make it sound like it was working in my videos, as much as I wanted it to work, it just didn't work. Russell Wilson operated off script way too much. He didn't have a quick enough release. He wasn't good enough pre-snap for Sean Payton and what Sean Payton wants to do with the offense, but that's okay because the way that they function got us to have the 12th overall pick where we could go out and get Sean Payton's guy. During the draft, the Pat McAfee show was having a draft the Palooza or whatever the hell they wanted to call it. And they had Bill Belichick on the show with him. And once the Broncos made their pick, Sean Payton joined the show and talked to Bill Belichick. And it was so cool to see both of these great minds of the game gush over Bo Nix's abilities. And some of the things that they were talking about and pointing out was his accuracy, his brain, his smarts, his understanding of concepts, his understanding of protections. And they both even said that his arm strength is surprising. There is even a moment after the Broncos had their private workout with Bo Nix, when Sean Payton got back in the car with, I believe it was George Payton, the general manager, and they looked at each other and Sean Payton says, are you kidding me? Just check this out. I just remember we got in the car afterwards and I just looked around and I said, are you kidding me? They knew for weeks that Bo Nix was their guy and that they were going to stay put at 12 to take him in the draft. They were getting their QB three at 12, which they viewed as incredible value. So I don't care if you think that it was a reach or whatever some 
genius bozo draft analyst believes about taking Bo Nix at 12th overall, if they think it was a reach or not, I don't care because I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like they know more about the quarterback position than Sean Payton and quarterbacks coach Davis Webb. Like that's just a stupid thought to have. And anyone who thinks that their understanding and their scouting report of Bo Nix was more accurate than Sean Payton and Davis Webb's scouting report, you're crazy. That's the nicest thing that I can say to you about the about that idea. Like that's just insane to me. But again, people have all sorts of different feelings. I feel like Bo Nix, along with JJ McCarthy, are probably the two most polarizing quarterbacks in the first round of this draft. I mean, damn, there was six quarterbacks taken out of the first 12 picks in this draft. That's never happened before. This quarterback draft has the potential of being one of the most insane quarterback drafts ever, or one of the worst quarterback drafts ever. It's rivaling the draft in 2021, the draft that had like Trey Lance and Justin Fields and Zach Wilson and all of those guys. Yeah, that one. I think the talent level in this quarterback class is much higher than that quarterback class. But again, I don't know more than these scouts know. So I'm not going to sit here and argue that. But what I am going to sit here and argue is that the Broncos got better. Yes, I said that out loud. I think that the Broncos are better off right now than they were this time last year. Call me crazy. Call me delusional. Call me a homer. Call me whatever the hell you want to call me. But I will tell you this much. With a top 10 offensive line and arguably from top to bottom, the best running back room in the entire NFL with the addition of Audrey Estime being put in this room with Javante Williams, Samaje P. Ryan, and Jaleel McLaughlin, I think that this running back room could be the best in the NFL. And you put those two things around Bo Nix, an extremely accurate passer, the most accurate passer in college football history, a guy that's 24 years old, a guy that has 61 starts under his belt in college, a guy that's married and isn't going to be out here being an idiot his first two, three years in the NFL, a guy that's going to have trustworthy ball catchers in guys like Cortland Sutton and Marvin Mims and Josh Reynolds, and then the Broncos went out and got Bo Nix's favorite target from college, Troy Franklin? Dude, the Broncos are in a better position today than they were 365 days ago. I feel pretty good about Bo Nix. A lot of people feel good about Bo Nix, but there are a lot of people who are uneasy about this pick because we have seen so many failures at quarterback in Denver for the last eight years. If and when Bo Nix starts week one, he will be the 14th different starting quarterback since Peyton Manning started Super Bowl 50, which was not that long ago. And here are some of the reasons why I think Bo Nix is going to be successful as the Denver Broncos starter in week one and beyond this season. He is incredibly intelligent. He's a fast processor. He understands what his pre-snap is telling him. He can command protections at the line of scrimmage. He can get the ball out on time. He knows exactly where his receivers are going to be, when they're going to be there. And when he does throw the pass, it is going to absolutely be on target. Throw that in with the fact that he threw over 400 passing attempts this last year at Oregon and only five of them were turnover worthy plays. He takes care of the football and he doesn't get sacked. Right there alone, the Broncos are going to be taking much fewer negative plays. Russell Wilson was sacked 45 times and the offensive line was credited with, I think, 16 of those sacks. Bo Nix is not going to be a guy that takes that many sacks. He's going to get the ball out of his hands. He's going to get it in a place where his receivers can catch it and get yards after the catch. And I truly believe that Bo Nix is always going to have this team in the correct protection, in the correct formation, in the correct position to move the ball down the field, whether methodically or quickly. I think that Bo Nix is going to surprise so many people when he comes into the league and he puts on that brand new Broncos uniform and he goes out and wins week one. I'm gonna be sitting here and I'm gonna be waiting in these comments of this very video to tell everyone who was a doubter, who was a naysayer, you were wrong. I can't wait to say I told you so. And it's not just me. There are lots of people out there who are excited about Bo Nix being in Denver 
with Sean Payton. And if you have a problem with Bo Nix being the quarterback for the Broncos because he only completes short passes, well... Uh, quite frankly, I'd complete a lot of long ones too. Dog. But anyways, like I said, I could be delusional. I could be crazy. I could be just hoping for the best. I could be looking at this through rose-colored glasses, but I don't care. I feel hope again. I think that the Broncos are going to win a lot more games than they have the last several years. And I think it's all because Bo Nix is going to be the guy and we've got Sean Payton that's going to put him in positions to take care of the football and to win football games. So stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to break down the rest of the draft class. We're going to be talking about some draft grades. I'm probably going to have some videos about power rankings for the NFL, looking at the AFC West, all those kinds of things. So if that's something that you're interested in moving forward and you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button, drop a like, and I will see you in the next one. I'm going to let Tony Scheffler take this one out, baby. Let's go Broncos! God bless!